Me and Van, another day, another adventure. Oh. It's our first morning in Albania. Last night at dinner, Tom got to meet my twin sister, Stacy, for the first time. And I got to meet her fiance, Florian. But between Tom not really wanting to go to Albania and Stacy and Florian showing up late, Tom wasn't in the best of moods. Off we go. I mean, see, he literally looks like the bus driver. Just saying. Straight up, I fucking called it, okay? What have we got planned today, Florian? Literally, dude. I mean... In a nice place. Right now, we're off to do Tom, some sightseeing, Tom, and hopefully Tom will loosen up. It's like one wheel in the front. It's a rickshaw. Oh. So many new things for the first time. Where do you guys go when you guys come here? Like, like the center area where the yeah. cafes and the restaurants mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Stacy and Florian have been together for over three years, and they're really comfortable together. It's really nice to see that. And I hope Tom and I could be like that someday. Our protectors. Have you ever gotten a, a fight for a girl? No. I think maybe Dos is using Stacey's relationship with Florian as a, a marker, should we say, in relation to our relationship. Would you fight for me? Yeah, no. Oh, baby. Oh. Me and Florian are from different sides of the world. For me, there's no competition. Wow, this is gorgeous. How old is it? 300 years. 300. Beautiful bridge. Look how blue the water is. Yes. Beautiful and many people come here for a photo shoot. So it's like a lover's bridge. Yeah, yeah. So you guys come here to propose? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> hey, this is why you come to Albania, to see bridge. <laughs> This is so dumb. <laughs> yeah, welcome. This is better than London. We have bridge. Yeah, you have London bridge. We have Albanian bridge. Nice bridge for you. This is why we drive an hour and 10 minutes outside of city. See, look at one bridge. I told you. Everyone say Albania, all bunkers. No? Bunkers, but also one bridge. You can see why you'd want to. Because it's just, it really is stunning. It's really nice to see Tom finally relax and feel the romance. I mean, Tom just made this comment about proposing at the bridge. I mean, if he proposes, I would say yes. Where are we going? Are you jumping Ooh. down? Come. Oh, oh baby. They're gonna pick me up. You got me? Dude, this is, oh my God. This is like giving me flashbacks to Turkey right now. I swear to fucking God. Plastic bidonlar falan her şey yani. Tam Türkiye amına koyayım. Tipe bak. Allah aşkına şuna bak. Tam Türkiye abi. Her yerde çöp. Çünkü piknik yapıyorlar. Hayvan oğlu hayvanlar. Her yerde piknik yapıp çöplerini bırakıyorlar. This is so... This is so Turkey. This right here. This image right here. With like the fucking plastic trash. Because someone was probably having a picnic there. You know what I mean? Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh. oh, you're so tall, babe. I'm the shorty. Jump. Oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. oh there's it. Your cheeks are popping out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is so sad. Thank you, babe. You got yeah. your camera, babe? Yeah. It's your hair. It's yours. Come on. Gotta tame that frizz. I know. Why'd you do your hair up like that? Because I just wanted to it wear it like up. a pom pom. It's all right. All good. Like a rat's I'm all nest. good. Worry about yourself. There we go. Stacey and I's relationship is very unique. We have a lot of similarities, but definitely a lot of differences. Stacey and I are each other's best friends, but sometimes we're each other's worst enemies. Frenemies. <laughs> ready? I want to be the short twin. Bro, this is Albanian bridge, bro. We take photo. Come on. Come on, we take photo at the Albanian bridge, brother. Oh, yeah. All right. That's, That's right. Cute. 
That's the Perfect. Shot. That's the shot. Yay. Oh, he threw his back out for that one. I don't think we're jealous of each other. I just think it's, you know, one having to do it up a little bit more than the other. So when you guys get married, are you going to get married here in Albania or are you going to go to the States? Well, I think we do both, you know. I think right now it makes more sense to probably have a wedding here first. You know, keep it small and intimate. I don't need a big, big, you know, celebration. It's great, you know. Do it how you want it. I will. I always will. Just let her have a, her, her white dress moment. I want my own. Uh, you know, when it's your time. So it's like your dream wedding, Tom. Uh, Just think about it, dude. If only she let Jesse cut the steak. She would not be in Albania right now. Competing with her sister. Uh, when her potential husband, future husband, is nowhere near uh, the same body fat percentage as Florian. I haven't really spent that much time thinking about he was a steakman being married. And she knew that. You are just like my father. Why the fuck do you hate Albania so much? I don't hate Albania. I'm not sure about Darcy and Tom's connection just yet, but I think he can sense that she wants something more. And it's scaring him away. I just want to see her happy and not make the same mistakes. She wants that fairy tale life, but I just feel like she's going about it the wrong way. Stay positive, that's all you can do. You know, just live in the moment. Albania does remind me of Turkey. I'm happy yes. you're engaged. It's a blessing. Well, I know well, that's what you say, right, but it kind of comes off, you know, a little. Do you really want me happy, nurse? I don't know. I was thinking the same thing about you. I've been engaged for three and a half years. Like, let me enjoy the moment. Let me do me and not, you know, always have to one up or whatever. It's just I'm not trying to. I just want you to have what you. So this is an embarrassing confession after like months of watching you, but how the hell do I get to see the images like you do on chat? I just have to manually type it out on my phone like I manually type out Keck. How long has this person been following me? Sub for four months. Following since 2020. Oh my god, dude. Do you watch on mobile or do you watch on your desktop? Stop making fun of him, chat. Don't make fun of him. He, they're asking. They're asking like in a nice way. Ah, you should. Thank you. You've always wanted. The tit for tat which seems to be occurring between Stacy and Darcy isn't really where I've thought I'd find myself, but I have. So I'm actually finding it quite difficult to deal with. It's a romantic setting. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Not the time or place right now. It's still like a romantic moment, and I feel like, you know, don't want to ruin it for the guys. Yeah. Everything be good. Please. Everything be good, Darcy. Yeah. It's just he chose to come here for me and you guys. I just want to make sure he's enjoying himself because it's very important yeah, for me to have him. this experience with him in a positive way two days. Okay. Yeah, I know. And we're trying to make it happy and positive, you know? Relax. It's all good. He's seeing things that I don't want him to see, and it's not good. That person probably hasn't heard the question yet. Because of how fucking delayed mobile is. I don't want him to judge me on Stacy and I's demeanor together. But I, I'm worried. I, I just hope Tom can look past today and, and focus on our future.
No, they respond to saying thank you. Okay. I'm like, I'm getting fatigued uh, from this. Okay. Uh, Darcy is too... There's too much instability there for me to like watch uh, continuously for this long. You know what I mean? So we're going to move on from this uh, for the time being. And uh, we'll return to this tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God. Uh, where is it? Hold on. Two things I want to talk about. Surprise, more politics. Um, that's uh, two things I'm going to show you. One is, uh, Boo Boo Bennett's, uh, fucking half sister apparently is on TikTok. And then of course the Andrew Yang tweet. Oh my fucking Lord, dude. Can you imagine just a worse fucking take? I'm standing with the people of Israel who are coming under bombardment attacks and condemn the Hamas terrorists. The people of New York City will always stand with our brothers and sisters in Israel who face down terrorism and persevere. I mean, just listen, dude. I mean, he had a good gimmick with the fucking UBI, okay? But. I mean, throwing this fucking hard is crazy. Ted Cruz retweeted him. Nice, dude. Nice. And this guy will probably win too. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Immediately after like nine babies were murdered by the Israeli state, like nine Palestinian children were fucking murdered by the Israeli state. This guy wrote that. Look who agrees with him. Stephen Miller, Andrew Yang is exactly right. Ilhan Omar is outrageously wrong. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy, dude. Look at the trending tab. Yang supports genocide. Insanity. In fucking sanity, dude. Or even the Zionists of my school think what Israel what Israel's doing is fucked. Terrible fucking take. The bombing of civilian homes in the Gaza Strip now, dude. I can't show that. What the fuck? You said it's Christ. Okay, never mind. It's not, there is no uh, blood or TOS, but. I mean, look at this shit. Andrew Yang is close to locking down almost universal support among leaders of New York City's ultra-Orthodox community, a loyal block of voters that can make or break a mayoral candidate. Huh. Interesting, dude. Crazy. Let's look at who agrees with Andrew Yang. Stephen Miller. Ian Miles Wrong. Megan McCain, hashtag Yang Gang. Ted Cruz, bravo to Yang for opposing the rabidly pro Hamas and anti Israel attacks from fellow Dams Omar and Talib. It's so fucking sick. I mean, I think he was always like this for the record. Like, he was always like this. It's not like fucking new. You guys already know I was never like a big fucking Yang Gang fan and have been critical of him from the jump. Uh, welcome to the fucking right side of uh, the Yang shit. 
Some facts about Yang for people throwing up their mouths, but throwing up in their mouths. He launched his campaign with co-chair Richie Torres, who said Palestinian human rights advocates are mentally ill and is funded by the Israeli apartheid to pink wash it. Andrew Yang recently celebrated. Uh, Andrew Yang recently celebrated an endorsement by one of the most despised racist right-wing Jewish leaders in New York City who was removed by city council for claiming Palestinians don't exist. Andrew Yang also celebrated an endorsement by another far-right Jewish leader who was handpicked by Dove Hikind, an open supporter of the Kahanist terrorists who are taking Palestinian homes and cheering mosque attacks. His wife fundraises for ethnic cleansing. In fact, Andrew Yang, who also brought, a, uh, also brought on an aide to that Kahanist, who was infamous in New York City for wearing blackface to parties and defending it, and his wife sold shirts with the Al-Aqsa Mosque being destroyed to fundraise for ethnic cleansing groups. Andrew Yang's campaign co-chair is one of the top donor recipients from apartheid money from the right. There's also a letter about him from mothers of those killed by the NYPD about how he betrayed each of them to favorite killer cops. One of Andrew Yang's biggest funders here in Queens, where his spouse is from, is the same funder that infamous that infamous elected official who called AOC a bitch. Nice, dude. Fucking nice. IDF soldier recounts harrowing heroic war story of killing eight-month-old child. Jesus fuck. Absolutely fuck Andrew Yang. Okay. Absolutely motherfuck Andrew Yang. A gigantic piece of shit who is so so fucking so desperate are you gonna be jewish and far right i mean i don't know if you're trying to if you have an ethno state project you can be very far right Do more of this wherever he goes. What is this? And saying that a king who crashes boycotts from the Palestinian people in Palestine and saying that it's akin to fascist boycotts of Jewish businesses that completely, completely disappoint many Palestinian activists, many Arabs, many Muslims who find the cause to ending the occupation of Palestine by the Israelis, by the Israeli government. Absolutely abhorrent. So we wanted to hear if you had any clarifying questions about that when there are other mayoral candidates who haven't made such comments and who has actually affirmed that we do have the right to be the thing is like the thing is even first of all this is america okay so nearly every single fucking uh, american politician is always going to give unconditional aid to israel okay most of them do that's just the reality it's our most important strategic asset slash ally in the middle east all of that sort of stuff. They're fucking murdering Muslims. So that's like, uh, you know, cherry on the top. Okay. But like, even most of the Democrat adjacent, like liberal adjacent people are at least politically savvy enough not to come out and offer unconditional support to Israel when they're literally, when the fucking corpses of Palestinian children have not even fucking dried yet. Okay, like that is fucking bloodthirsty, maniacal shit. Like most Democrats would just say, yeah, yeah, BDS is bad. I don't want to touch it. Whatever. Israel is incredibly important for us as an ally. But like this level of pandering is so fucked up. It's so insanely fucked up. He he's must be real fucking real fucking desperate. Jesus Christ. Absolutely absolutely irredeemable. Um fucking insane. Yeah, Bodega Andy, dude. Why doesn't he go fucking visit some more bodegas and talk about how much he loves bodegas? If Yang was anti-Zionist, he would lose. Of course he's going to do this. Dude, okay, listen. Secretary of Antifa, 
there's being like uh there's being pro zionist or being a zionist and then there is this level of pandering that's the point i'm trying to make there's plenty of fucking democrats who don't give a shit about palestinian kids most of them don't but even they have the fucking wherewithal to like hold it a goddamn second you know what i mean just you know just let shit cool off a little bit before you start uh saying i love the fucking I love the fucking genocidal murder state. Uh, and like right after, right at the heels of like uh, some, some fresh fucking uh, baby murder that they just engaged in. Like you couldn't wait a fucking week, dude. You literally couldn't wait a fucking week. Nope. Had to do it now. I just got back from eight hours ago. You still stunlocked? I mean, this is a fucking huge issue. There's not a lot of people who are very vocal about this sort of stuff. So it's already fucking super triggering for me. Um, it's something that uh, people constantly fucking yell at me about whenever I talk about it. It's, it's probably my like least favorite topic that I cover all the goddamn time. This is the second in polling in Yang's main competition. Today on Yom Yerushalayim, Israel came under attack from Hamas-fired rockets in Gaza. Jesus Christ, dude. Israelis live under the constant threat of terrorism and war, and New York City's bond with Israel remains unbreakable. I stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of Israel at the time of crisis. What the fuck are these people doing, dude? To be honest, there's a lot of left-wing Zionists. Half of all, half all Israeli PMs, including Robin and Ben Gurion, were labor. Zionism is not relegated to the right wing slash fascism. Yeah, I mean, I know. Um. There is not even, there is, uh, look, dude. Yeah, she said fucking pray for Israel. Oh, great. I, I, I'm blocked by her. I forget why, but I said some shit to her and she blocked me. I understand positive, but why are normal Americans not against this? I mean, look, the incredibly important, uh, very solid, hyper reactionary, conservative, Hasidic Jewish voting bloc is unconditionally, for the most part, with like some very vocal exceptions that they literally bully out of their communities, are, uh, of course, pro Israel and want nothing more than death and destruction to fall upon all Palestinian people. Then you have the liberal, um, then you have like, again, liberal or even somewhat progressive Jewish people and Christian people as well that just have a blind spot for Israel's crimes against humanity. It's like the Iraq war, dude, but even less significant. Because, and this is before we get to the conservatives. Conservatives don't give a shit. They love that Muslims are dying. And also, evangelicals have a separate religious reason for why they want Israel to be uh, given entirely to uh, the Jews. But... Blake Flayton, this kid is big among young Zionists. The oh, fuck? Rootless Cosmopolitan, co-founder of New Zionists fuck is this welcome to the new zionist congress the name of every jew who has lit a candle in the darkness we're here to build a bonfire i mean you're like yo this kid is so fucking famous he's got 218 likes dude israel is striking military targets hamas is attempting to strike civilian population centers the same hamas notorious for entrapping men women and children near danger to provoke international outrage that is terrorism you are helping no palestinian by excusing it yeah dude Like, 
Good take from the Human Rights Watch. Uh, oh, Jesus. Can't believe Human Rights Watch follows me. Um, okay. Major escalation taking place right now in Israel and Palestine with significant human rights implications. HRW is investigating these events. Some preliminary takeaways. I mean, they have been vocal about uh, Israel's actions in, in recent... Um, I mean, they have been vocal in the past as well, but like definitely recently. Israeli government moving to evict Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah under law, allowing Jewish Israelis to take over their homes based on prior ownership claim. This would displace families who are refugees barred by law from reclaiming land the government took from them as recent uh, Human Rights Watch uh, report shows. They're watching me because uh, I, I'm violating human rights. Okay, that's why they're watching me. That's why they're following me, dude. To expose me. And my human rights abuses that I do in this fucking daycare every day. Plan Sheikh Jarrah evictions stem from an Israeli government policy of maintaining a solid Jewish majority in Jerusalem and target demographic ratios, by the way, Jewish Israelis and Palestinians there, it has set out an underscore reality of apartheid that millions of Palestinians face. Israeli authorities' brutal treatment of protesters in occupied East Jerusalem, including in and around the Al-Aqsa Mosque, stem from a systematic practice of excessive force and impunity for serious abuses. Here's a fun little fact for all of you that don't know this. But in the aftermath of uh, 9-11, the IDF trained our uh, police departments, literally our local police departments, not just New York, just like regular old fucking police departments all around the country for counterterrorism activities, which is part of the reason why the kettle and corralling strategy that you see all around the country, all around the country during the George Floyd, demonstrated during the George Floyd protest, for example, where they like push you, box you into an area and then gas you. Uh, that was an IDF strategy. Uh, IDF's counterterrorism tactics were uh, basically baked in to the American police force and the way that they operate as an occupying force, specifically and especially in black and brown neighborhoods. So, uh, the, this shit runs super fucking deep. And if anyone ever tells you that that is like an anti-Semitic conspiracy, you can point to a million different fucking people who have pointed this out in a proud manner back in the day. Okay. I lied. That wasn't a fun fact. That was an unfun fact. Sorry. Yeah. As if the American police department wasn't fucking racist enough or awful enough, they got military training from the IDF who treats the people that they are, uh, that they are uh, supposedly protecting and serving, I guess. Well, not necessarily. Military force as enemy combatants in a field of war. The IDF that is also uh, famous for sniping eight-year-olds, uh, shooting fucking medics, shooting journalists with sniper rifles, you know, uh, shooting disabled people. Um, that IDF uh, is uh, the one training the American police department. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, So, yeah. Rockets indiscriminately fired by Palestinian armed groups towards Israeli population centers endanger the lives, homes, and properties of tens of thousands of Israeli civilians. These attacks are unjustified and are war crimes as HRV extensively documented. Yeah, except the Palestinian rockets that are made of fucking tinfoil uh, in retaliation, which is still bad, obviously. It's, no one is like saying that that's like a fucking uh, uh, thing to do, an acceptable thing to do. Get, as we watched earlier eviscerated into nothingness by the incredible Iron Dome defense system, for the record, for those of you who don't know, which has a 90% success rate. Israel's use of explosive weapons with wide area effects in densely populated Gaza on a population living in an open air prison for 14 years bound to result in civilian harm. Alarming reports of many Palestinians killed today. HRW has documented many Israeli war crimes over the years. These events highlight the need to end impunity for serious abuses and for international criminal court to investigate and prosecute those implicated. Cycles of ex escalations will persist so long as the international community continues to fail to take the human rights measures situation of this gravity warrants. Oh, is that Blake Flayton, the guy who tweeted the fucking fake story about being heckled by some person for being a Zionist? Someone wanted me to watch this before. 
Wait, is this like real? So I'm on the A train with my cute tote and a woman runs up to me in the middle of my Troy Savon jam sesh and screams. Israel is a terrorist state and they're killing children, you bitch, in my face. And then free Palestine several uh, times. Aliyah is imminent. Oh my God, dude. That definitely happened. Dude, he has a young, wild, and Zionist tote bag, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, and then everybody clapped. What the Biden admin thinks about the situation? Principle of self-defense. Uh, we you certainly. Know, I'm asking if you think that the principle of self-defense applies to the retaliatory the, the, the airstrikes that they're conducting in uh, response. Matt, this to is the... a very fluid situation. I, I would hesitate to uh, comment on operations beyond, you know, the rocket fire that uh, is clearly targeting innocent civilians uh, in Israel. So I would. So what's up? Why is there? Hold on. Hold up. I'm confused. So you do have a you do have a fucking statement. And that statement is uh, on on uh, Israeli self-defense slash uh, the only side of this that is inappropriate is like the rocket fire from the Palestinians towards Israel. I hesitate Got it. to speak to specific operations um, that have just occurred, but the broader principle of... Do you think rising tensions could develop into an all-out war? There is no all-out war, motherfucker. It's like it's like Jews in the ghetto in Nazi Germany trying to fight back against the German government. Like there is no all-out war. What all-out war could they do? There's, there's all-out war if there is proportionate warfare. There is nothing that they can fucking do. Palestinians, there has been an all-out war for the entirety of our lives. And that war has been waged, one-sided, by Israel for as long as I've been fucking alive. Okay? It's like, like Palestinians are like a, a kid trying to defend themselves against a fucking adult with a nuclear weapon. Okay? Sorry, no disrespect to the Palestinians, but like they've been living in Gaza in the world's largest open air prison, uh, as uh, even the Human Rights Watch uh, fucking uh, openly states. They've been subjected to uh, Israel's insane territorial expansion in the form of settler terrorism in the the uh, Western Bank, which was supposed to be the West Bank was supposed to be Palestinian territory. There is no. There is no fucking uh, two sides on this. Debate a pro-Israel person? No, fuck off, dude. I don't want to hear some motherfucker justify genocide, dude. I'm sorry. I don't want to give a fucking platform to that. You can claim that, like, this will reconfirm your uh, suspicions that, like, uh, uh, you know... Yeah, let me, let me fucking debate some genocide, dude. Let me have a fucking Nazi come in and tell me the Holocaust is fake afterwards, too. Fuck it, you know? Let's have a, let's have an open field on all ideas. Like, what, what a psychotic fucking take. No, that's a goddamn waste of time, dude. Come on, dude. There's no... Dude, come on. There's both sides, dude. Both sides. Both sides. David Pacman liked the Andrew Yang tweet? Yeah, that's... You and I and all of us are watching colonialism happen right in front of our fucking eyes, dude. That's it. Zionism does not equal Nazism. What the fuck logic is that? No, but what the IDF is currently doing and what the Israeli government has been doing is genocide, okay? It's ethnic cleansing. It's displacement. It is a human rights fucking violation. 
Israel is an apartheid state and has been for a very long time, and they have consistently escalated their incredibly militant action against the Palestinians, which they have complete and total sovereignty over, and they exercise that sovereignty in incredibly violent ways. Okay? Incredibly cruel and abusive and violent ways. It's fascist as fuck. And it's ridiculous to fucking baby around this, to tiptoe around this, uh, because Jews have historically been marginalized. Okay? There's plenty of fucking Jews who hate the actions of Israel. Stop being anti-Semitic and uh, making it seem like every fucking part of the international Jewish community is monolithic and an absolute unconditional supporter of the violent genocidal actions of the state of Israel. How about that? Are you happy? Many Palestinians are receiving this message. Hello, you've been identified to have taken part in a violent acts at Al-Aqsa Mosque. We will hold you accountable. Israeli intelligence. Because we're likely using a GPS system like the one for corona outbreaks. Self-defense is something um, we, uh, uh, we stand by uh, on behalf of Israel yeah, and every other country. Do you think that a Israeli military response to the rockets coming in, it, it, that in a a military response to the rockets coming in is covered by this broader rubric of self-defense, right? Uh, self self-defense often does uh, uh, authorize secondly, the use of force. This, thank you, Nat. Uh, I want to ask you about East Jerusalem, but to talk about what you said about the principle of self-defense. Does that in any way apply to the Palestinians? Do they have a right to self-defense? Do Palestinians have a right to self-defense? Uh, I'm. In broadly speaking, Saeed, uh, we believe in the concept of self-defense. We believe it applies uh, to any state. I don't uh, think okay. that uh, I, 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 I so oh, very interesting. Why is it again? Um, that's crazy. Uh, so Israel has a right to self-defense. Palestine. Well, it's not a state technically. So yikes. Uh, no right to self-defense. Sorry. I, I, I certainly wouldn't want uh, my words to be construed. No, as I understand. I, I want to ask you. I'm this pussy is too afraid to be like, yeah, Palestinians, of course, have a right to self-defense. You know? Yeah, nice, dude. I don't want to harp on this either, but, you know, the Israelis killed 13 people just now, you know, including maybe five or six children. Do you condemn that? Do you condemn the killing of children? Said, uh, I, I'm asking, do you condemn the killing of Palestinian children? Obviously, uh, and these reports are just emerging, uh, and I understand, I was just speaking to the team, I understand we don't have independent confirmation of facts on the ground yet, so I'm very yeah, no, no, no. The accuracy of the data that we're getting from on the ground is is just uh, is questionable and debatable. You can't fucking say killing children is bad, dude. You can't say that. You literally can't fucking say that. Hesitant. That's great, dude. Nice. Uh, to get into reports that are just emerging. Uh, obviously, okay. the deaths of civilians, uh, be they Israeli or Palestinians, are something we would take very seriously. Okay. Yeah, right, dude. You're going to know as soon as I read what your answer was that there's a big problem with it. You said, well, not a problem. It just doesn't answer the question. We believe that it, meaning the right to self-defense, applies to any state. They were spouting the Netanyahu Holocaust uh, revisionist take. Dude, why do I have so many fucking, like, multiple, uh, uh, multiple month Andes in my chat who come out with this insane, idiotic fucking revisionist bullshit, dude? First of all, dude, first of all, okay, um, literally absolutely zero of that justifies what is currently going on. And secondly, Netanyahu literally fucking came out and, and, and his hatred for Muslims, specifically Palestinians, was so powerful that he unironically said and was uh, condemned by a lot of Jewish leaders and thinkers for saying this, that Hitler actually got his ideas to uh, kill the Jews from uh, the, the uh, at the time, I forget what the Muslim fucking uh, imam was, the Palestinians uh, gave Hitler the idea. That anti-Semitism was like an idea that 
Hitler learned from the from the uh, Palestinian Mufti, the Mufti at the time, which is revisionist and Holocaust revisionism, of course, is the primary weapon of the fascist. So kind of weird that the um, kind of weird that the uh, the the Prime Minister of Israel was uh, doing that, but you know whatever. Liberal Jews are fed a constant diet of fear by our community. Keep this in mind. We only hear the good and none of the bad. If we question, we are reminded about the Holocaust and no other government can be trusted to keep us safe. Yeah. Hate follows is your entire economy? That's fucking absolutely not true. You are mistaken. Hate followers don't fucking subscribe for months on end. These are people who have been brainwashed by propaganda. Okay? These are people who see... What is going on in a faraway land and only hear one side of the story and that side is a steady diet of fucking propaganda that they get from their own fucking communities because no one gives a fuck about Muslims but they certainly do not give a fuck about Palestinians. Even other Muslims will fake uh, carry on support for Palestinians when in fact they don't give a shit about what happens to Palestinians. That's why you don't hear anything from the cowardly administrations of all of the fucking Gulf nations who set up wonderful new deals with the American government uh, that uh, in an effort to turn a blind eye to Israel's violent conquest against the Palestinians, which they have sovereignty over, uh, so they could get their fucking nice little F-35 planes and shit. State. Well, you see the problem, right? Yes. Do you want to? Do you regard Palestine as a state? I, I wasn't do referring. Do you think that? Do you? Do you? But you, I, you, but you it, don't but, in the context of the ICC and the UN. I, so are you I, saying that you do not? Damn, these motherfuckers are not letting this dude slide at all. If what it the applies fuck? To any state? Are you saying the Palestinians don't have a right to self defense? I, I was making a broader point, not attached to uh, Israel or the Palestinians in that case. So. They do have a right to self-defense. Matt, I'm, I'm not, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm, I'm not in a position to, to debate the legalities uh, right. from up here. What, our message is one of de-escalation. And you got dumb libs who think that being anti-Zionist is automatically you being anti-Semitic. Oh, yeah, don't even... Okay, yeah, don't get me fucking started on that shit. Uh, I can't... I don't know if I can... What? Dude, what are these things, dude? What is going on in Sheikh Jarrah? The problem, Sheikh Jarrah, Shimon Hatzadik, is a neighborhood in Jerusalem that is dealing with property disputes over real estate ownership. Oh, this conflict is not between the Israeli government and Palestinian leaders, but rather private citizens who have been fighting in court. What kind of court, I might ask? Oh, an Israeli court? That's interesting. Let's not even talk about that part of it. Whose land is this? Whose homes are these? Oh, Palestinian homes. Okay, well... I guess it's just a dispute amongst landlords and tenants, except the landlords are the ones who are being fucking evicted by people who have decided they're tenants now. I know that that makes it sound weird in a leftist community, but these are fucking dudes who have owned their own goddamn cottage for generations who are now being forced out of it, okay? Motherfucker made Instagram graphics. For the trigger, this is a legal situation between the Jews with real estate rights pre the establishment of Israel in 1948, whose homes and property was stolen from them when Jordan occupied Jerusalem. Under this foreign occupation, their land was managed as enemy assets by the Jordanian government. The stolen land was given to Arab civilians who have inhabited it for decades. Wow, yeah, totally. Uh, what is going on? Why things got worse? In recent weeks, the tension rose around this real estate fight as several individual Israelis, including the one radical right-wing politician Itamar ben Gavir, arrived in the neighborhood. Think Marjorie Taylor Greene hopping in to stir up the drama. Dude, I love, 
I love the fucking, uh, the, the Instagram language. And I also love the progressive Jew take on, uh, on, on, uh, Israel's actions, by the way. Oh, it's just a real estate conflict. Oh, uh, you know, there's some bad guys out there as well on the, the right wing reactionary side of Israel. Like it, those are different though. Like this is a normal conflict. It's just crazy. Uh, tomorrow night kicks off Jerusalem Day in Israel. It's an Israeli national holiday commemorating the reunification of East Jerusalem and the establishment of Israeli control over the old city. Literally a fucking ultra-nationalist celebration where, like, far-right Israelis walk around and fuck shit up. It's literally like a celebration of the occupation. What an interesting fucking uh, approach to that. But very progressive language, uh, so that's cool. Uh, Wednesday is Eid al-Fitr, Friday is Quds, and Nakba Day is on Saturday. These are all emotional, national, and religious days for both Palestinians and Israelis. Also this week, courts will decide on the Sheikh Jarrah Shimon Hatzadik legal dispute. Everything is very emotionally charged. Why are you hearing about this Jerusalem neighborhood? Well, the media, looking for traffic, is preparing readers to be very angry in the next few days. Outrage, war, and nationalism sells, and this is a perfect storm for all three. Are there heroes and villains in the story? No, because like every ethno-religious dispute... No side is 100% the villain. No, come on, dude. Think about all the ethno-religious disputes. Come on, there's no 100% the villain side, dude. But both the Arab Muslim residents and the Jewish residents have a legitimate claim to the land. Wow, that's crazy. The answer to this dispute will be decided by the Israeli Supreme Court, which has a sitting Arab justice in it. So like when fucking Jacob from Brooklyn um, flew out from Brooklyn to Jerusalem to literally take over forcibly a part of a Palestinian's home, and then was called out for it and said, if I don't steal this, someone else will steal it from you. So let me steal it instead. It's not my fault that this is happening. Um, he's actually holding on to a legitimate stake, a legitimate claim, a legitimate ownership, uh, despite the fact that all he's known is Brooklyn before this. Pretty cool. Very interesting. Never mind, guys. What's going on in Sheikh Jarrah? Death of Israelis and Palestinian teenagers. As a reaction to the conflict in this neighborhood, Israeli teenager Yehuda Gutta was gunned down on Sunday this week by a 44-year-old Palestinian terrorist while walking down the street. Two of his friends were also shot. Three days later, a Palestinian teenager, Said Oda, was shot and killed by Israeli soldiers. His friend was also shot. The soldiers were on a manhunt to find Yehuda's murderer, who was still on the run. Hmm, do you notice a difference here? Do you notice a difference here? One is state-sponsored violence that is wholesale advocated for. The other one is a random fucking psycho. Okay? That's the difference. So, having said that, another action... That Brooklyn dude is 100% from my neighborhood, Borough Park. I feel so embarrassed. They're sick in the head. Don't let them claim ignorance. Um... The other part about this that is uh, fucking awesome, uh, great, just a normal shit, normal things is, for example, earlier, why did they, teenagers, they were looking for a 44-year-old? Because that's the justification for murdering a fucking Palestinian teenager, which happens quite re uh, regularly. It's just, come on, they were just looking for a, a, for a 44-year-old guy, so they killed a Palestinian teenager. Why don't you think about the both sides here? Kind of like the both sides of... Uh, kind of like the both sides of the conflict uh, in regards to the, uh, the, the settler terrorist who literally rammed his car into Palestinians earlier, I think it was yesterday, and the IDF immediately swooped in and protected him with guns. He literally rammed into Palestinians. There's video of it. I don't want to show it. I, I don't want to fucking uh, show you the video because it's TOS. And, uh, and the coverage of it in our wonderful uh, mainstream media in the West was... Uh, uh, what was it? I think like Israeli car is attacked by rocks. Bullshit. Um, uh, and is, uh, and, and, uh, 
fuck, what was it? It was like a Reuters thing that like fucked me up. It was like a Reuters article. It was a Reuters tweet. I can't even show it to you. Oh yeah. Car attacked by uh, stone crashes or something. Like it was fucking crazy. I saw a headline about it calling a stoning of the car. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that was pretty tight. Uh, that was, that was pretty cool. That was a really cool way of covering that. Um, let me see if this has the footage on it. Yeah. Palestinian stone Israeli car, which crashes as Jerusalem seethes. There is literal fucking, there is literal fucking footage of the dude ramming his car, like purposely trying to ram his fucking car. into Palestinians on the street. You're wrong in that one dude. He was getting pebbled before slamming the people. Don't pick this fight, please. It's a losing fight. Just focus on the picture. No, motherfucker. Because what is literally fucking insane is that you just had the audacity to say he was getting pebbled, so he ran... He purposely fucking tried to crash into walking dudes on the street like you have the fucking audacity to say he was getting pebbled so it's justifiable that he tried to murder people with his fucking car do you not see that please just substitute palestinians if you're a woke person you're a woke american substitute palestinian for black person okay and then put instead of israeli white person in the fucking uh, car and maybe you'll start to develop a little bit of empathy. If you're really white and you don't give a fuck about black people, think about it like it's a dog, okay? It's a cute little golden retriever. A golden retriever puppy was on the side of the street and it started barking at a vehicle. And a big, bad, scary man immediately tried to drive the vehicle into the puppy. Because some of you, I'm just going to be honest with you, have more consideration for dogs, puppies, which I love, by the way. You know I love dogs, okay? More than fucking human beings. So let me just like put it into terms where maybe you can act like you can practice a little bit of fucking empathy so you don't come across like a goddamn demon. All right? Think about it. Like uh, you saw someone walking a puppy on a warm sidewalk and the puppy's paws might be hurting. Okay? I don't want to show the video. Like the very same people who uh, literally understand the very same people who understand like anti-protest legislation being passed in Florida being so fucking inhumane and awful because it's basically a fucking free ticket for psychopathic conservatives to like gun it down the highway and like murder black people who are protesting down the line to give them legal justification to do so are so confused and so shocked when it comes to a faraway land that is magical and mystical where our uh, allies are, are just uh, in a never-ending conflict against these uh, faceless, lifeless, uh, non-human entities. Right? Yeah.
That argument will 100% just convince Zionists to hate black people. Anyway, um, so I'm going to move on. Uh, I don't want to fucking uh, uh, talk about this uh, any further. I keep talking about it. It's really frustrating. Okay. I just, I, I, I think it's fucking ridiculous that uh, people, technically Israelites inhabited Israel before Islam was even a religion. Oh shit, dude. Never mind then, bro. Fuck that, dude. No, time to wipe out all the Palestinians. My bad, dude. Fuck, dude. That's... Oh shit. I didn't realize, dude. They unearthed like Israeli coins or some shit, right? Or, or coins that belong to uh, Israelites. So, I mean, boom. Never mind. Fucking let's, uh, let's wipe out literally all fucking Arabs that live in the region. Fuck. All right, well, I guess it's time for Native Americans to start fucking bombing and nuking America, okay? I'm saying fucking pog. Dumbasses that also live in America and would not want to die and get nuked. You think these modern actions of Israel, the reason so many people dislike Jews and deny the Holocaust? No. People dislike Jews and deny the Holocaust because anti-Semitism is at the heart of, like, all fucking fascist rhetoric. Because if you have an idealistic uh, worldview, or if you believe in, like, uh, uh, if, you, if your worldview is not fucking grounded, then you have to find a bad guy, okay, for every story. To, like, tie it all together. And that bad guy, historically, has literally always been Jews in every fucking story, in every scapegoat throughout history. It's always the Jews, okay? That's why even fucking flat earth conspiracies somehow tie back to anti-Semitism. That's why so many fucking idiots blame Jews and hate Jews and deny the fucking Holocaust and a bunch of other psychopathic, bigoted bullshit. Okay? The worst part is, actual fucking Nazis will act like uh, their criticism of, uh, their, their actually anti-Semitic criticism of all Jews uh, is, is, is actually legitimate because of the actions of Israel. When no, it's straight up, they want to mask the they want to be able to have an out to say like, oh, well, I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm just criticizing Israel. Yeah. Anyway, um If 
if you thought the Iron Dome defense was cool, look up CRM defense. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. I am going to... Uh, no, no Resident Evil 8 today because I already, uh, I already finished it. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run a three minute ad here and end it. Uh, I'm gonna go hang out with my mom and dad. Okay. They're here. They're waiting for me. So, uh, I'm gonna end it on nine hours today. Okay. And we'll figure out what to play tomorrow. I think I might go back to Subnautica tomorrow. Um. Anyway. Okay. I had a fun time today. This was good. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I hope I was able to, uh, offer a little bit of coverage perspective that you don't often hear from American media and just, uh, Western media in general. My hair is so crazy. I need like, I need like a fucking officially man bun time for me hair wise. Um, and, uh, we'll figure out what kind of, what, what games I can play. We'll figure out what game I can play tomorrow. And, um, that's it. Okay. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I have a podcast tomorrow. Um, you can send uh, stuff to the podcast at speakpipe.hassan or slash Hassan, speakpipe.com slash Hassan. If you want me to cover it in the podcast, you send your voicemails there. We're going to do it tomorrow. Love you all and uh, bye.